What happens to my cosigners if I file bankruptcy and include cosign debt uh, in my Chapter 7 or Chapter 13 petition? I'm Jonathan Ginsberg. I'm an Atlanta area personal bankruptcy attorney representing clients, again, in the Atlanta area in both Chapter 7 and Chapter 13. And cosigned debt's fairly common where you have uh, entered into a contract and somebody has cosigned with you. Uh, not uncommon, it's a car. It could be some other type of loan. I know certain, I remember years ago, the Postal Service, the Atlanta Postal Credit Union, would ask people to get cosigners for all kind of loans, and it was just a major disaster where you'd have people with all kind of cosign loans and things like that. Um, but it does happen, and certainly if it's your parent or your sibling or your child, uh, you want to be real careful when you're dealing with cosign debt. So first of all, yes, you can include it in a bankruptcy. So you can include debt because the bankruptcy is personal to you. So if you, f let's say you filed Chapter 7, you include a cosign debt. Uh, basically, what happens is the debt, um, assuming it is an unsecured debt, will be discharged as to you, uh, but your cosigner would find that the, the creditor would come to the cosigner and say, this person has filed bankruptcy, now you have to pay the debt. You're not going to have a very happy cosigner, obviously. Um, there is something called the co-debtor stay that does apply uh, in bankruptcies many times, and I'm not going to go into that in detail, but that might delay the, uh, especially in Chapter 13, that may delay the uh, execution of collecting against the cosigner, uh, but it's not going to happen for very long, and certainly the creditor can get a, a, what they call relief from stay to go after the cosigner. In Chapter 13, you can set up a special class in your Chapter 13 plan to pay the co-debtor's debt uh, at 100%. So let's say that you had purchased uh, a vehicle that you otherwise would be able to do a cram down on, meaning reduce the payment to the value of the vehicle, which is harder and harder to do these days. Uh, but you had a cosigner, you wouldn't do the cram down. So basically, you'd pay that debt in full to protect your co debtor. Uh, and as long as you're paying the co debtor, protecting the co debtor, uh, there's not going to be any. any you know, collection effort uh, on that co-debtor. Now, whether the co-debtor's credit gets affected is a different story because if the co-debtor's obligation is not triggered, it should not affect their credit. But if you're going into a Chapter 13, let's say, for, for example, and you're paying the co-debtor at less than the, co or co the, the debt that has been co-signed at less than, than the contract payment, then as far as the creditor and the co-debtor are concerned, you're paying this debt, but you're paying it slow. In that situation, it is very possible that your co-debtor's credit could be dinged. So unless you pay the contract rate of the debt, uh, your co-debtor will be negatively affected in terms of credit. So, you know, there are consequences to it. Again, this is one of these situations where if you have a co-debtor um, and you want to protect that co-debtor 100% in full so they don't see any negative repercussions, it's going to cost you more money in your Chapter 13 plan or it's going to be more difficult to deal with in Chapter 7. You're going to have to reaffirm that debt and continue making payments on it. Um, you may not be able to control the timing, meaning there may be a gap in payments, which again could trigger a ding on your co-debtor's credit. And this is not a whole lot you can do about it. When you file bankruptcy, things tend to stop. Creditors won't accept payments while you're in bankruptcy until certain things have happened, the plan has been confirmed, or you've reaffirmed the debt. So I tell my clients, Assume that your co-debtor, even if you pay them in full, they may see some late payments on their credit report. There's not much you can do about that, but as long as you're being paid in full, it shouldn't hurt the credit all that much. But yes, uh, your co-debtor's credit will be most likely impacted when you file bankruptcy. Um, you also have the choice of leaving your co-debtor out to dry not paying the debt in full, in which case the co-debtor gets collected upon. Again, if it's a family member, it's going to make Thanksgiving dinner really awkward. If it's a friendship, it may be an ex-friendship. So, you know, you just have to really think about all that. This is something that, that I would tell you if you've got a code signed debt, um, talk to an attorney. If we're talking about it, we'll go through all the scenarios. You can make a decision of how important it is to you to salvage the relationship. Also, what you should tell your code debtor about what's going to happen so they know there's not going to be any surprises there. But again, realistically, and the reality is, in my experience, there's going to be some damage, some dinging on the credit for your co-debtor. Um, but if you uh, take steps to pay the debt in full, 
pretty much on time at the contract rate, the damage will be minimized. So yes, you deal with co-debtors, you have, you have to list them. And the way I phrased the question initially was, you know, if you include a co-debt, you have to include it. You cannot leave a co-signed debt off. You just have to figure out a way to treat it um, in bankruptcy. And again, it may cause a little bit of stress in your relationships by doing that. But again, you've got to make a decision about what makes the most sense for you. And if filing bankruptcy means makes the most sense for you in terms of your own personal financial future uh, and present, then that's what you got to do. Um, hope you found this helpful. Please visit me online at atlanta-bankruptcy-attorney.com or call me at 770-393-4985. Thanks a lot.